Let's find out the average power transmitted by this transverse wave, which has the amplitude of 0.5 millimeter frequency of 100 hertz, and the tension on a wire on which this wave is set up is given as 100 newton. It has also been given that the speed of this transverse wave is 100 meter per second. So you know that the average power transmitted through any point of the string, which is same as the average power transmitted by the source, is given as half omega square a square mu into v, right? And if you write omega as 2 pi f, then the average power is 2 pi square f square a square mu into v. But did you notice that the value of the linear mass density is not given t? And therefore, we can put the value of mu from this equation as mu is equal to t divided by v square. And now, if you put mu as t by v square, then t by v square into v will become just t by v. So let's quickly put the values to find out the answer. So the average power transmitted is going to be 2 pi square f is 100. So 100 square is 10 raised to the power 4. Amplitude is 0 0.5 millimeter. Let's convert it into meters. So this is going to be 5 into 10 raised to the power minus 4 square. And this is a square. And tension is 100. The speed is also 100, right? And the unit is going to be joule per second. Remember, we are dealing with power, okay? And let's simplify this a little bit. So 100 and 100 are gone. This is going to be 2 pi square into 25 into 10 raised to the power minus 8 into 10 raised to the power 4 which is 10 raised to the power minus 4 joule per second. Now, if you put the value of pi square approximately to be 10, then can you see that you will get this as, so if this is 10, then this is going to be 25 into 2, that is 50 into 10, 500 into 10 raised to the power minus 4, or you can say 50 millijoule per second. And if you look at the options, then the closest option to this is 49 millijoule per second. And because we have approximated the value of pi square, we know that this is going to be the required answer. Right? So you can take option B as the average power transmitting transmitted by the source to the wire. Now in this case, two sources A and B are producing two waves with equal frequency and equal amplitude. The amplitude is given as A. So when the waves produced by these two sources reach the point P, then it has been mentioned that the wave produced by the source A is ahead of the wave produced by source B by pi by 3 at this location. Now, given that AP minus BP is 50 centimeter and the wavelength is 1 meter, you have to find out the resultant amplitude at this point P. Okay? So, we know that we have to use the principle of superposition, where we know that the resultant amplitude will be given by under root a1 square plus a2 square plus 2a1 a2 cos of delta phi, where delta phi is the total phase difference. Now we know that a1 is a and a2 is also a. But do you think that the value of delta phi is pi by 3 or something else? Well, there will come a phase difference due to the path difference also. So the path difference is 50 centimeter 
or you can write this as 1 by 2 meter and we know that in such a case we can find the phase difference by using the formula 2 pi by lambda into delta x. So let's put the value. So this is going to be 2 pi divided by lambda is 1 and delta x is 1 by 2 and this gives the phase difference due to the path difference as pi. But there is already a phase difference of pi by 3 which means that the total phase difference and let's say delta phi total. So delta phi total should be pi plus pi by 3. Correct? And this is 4 pi by 3. So now we can apply this formula to find out the resultant amplitude. So the resultant amplitude is going to be under root and remember this is at point P. Okay. So this is going to be A square plus A square plus 2 A1 A2 that is 2 A square into cos of 4 pi by 3. And cos 4 pi by 3 is minus 1 by 2. Right? So basically this is minus A square. And you will get the resultant amplitude to be equal to A. So in this case, we can tick option D as the right answer. Now in this case, if you look at the net displacement Y of the resultant wave, then you can clearly see that it is a combination of two waves. And these two waves are superimposing to give the resultant wave. So one of these waves is 1 upon root A sine kx minus omega t and the other one is 1 upon root B cos kx minus omega t. Right? So simply you have to find out the resultant amplitude which is given by under root a1 square plus a2 square plus 2 a1 a2 cos of delta phi. Now what is the phase difference between these two waves? Do you think it is zero? Well no. Because we can see there is a cos here and sine here. So we should get them in the same form to find out the phase difference. So what I'm going to do is express this as sine. But if I want that, then I should include an angle of pi by 2 like this. Correct? Now can you see that the phase difference between these two waves is pi by 2. Correct? So what is the resultant amplitude? Well, the resultant amplitude should be under root a1 square, which is 1 by a plus a2 square which is 1 by b plus 2a1 a2 cos of 90 which is 0. So basically you have the resultant amplitude to be equal to under root a plus b divided by ab and you can see that option d must be right. So in this case three waves are set up along the same path with the same time period or you can say same frequency but different amplitudes. Amplitude of the first wave is A, of the second one is A by 2 and the third one is A by 3. Now at some location x, the phase of the first wave which has the amplitude A is given as 0. The phase of the second wave which has the amplitude A by 2 at that location is given as minus pi by 2 and the phase of the third wave at that location is pi. You simply have to find out the net amplitude and the phase of the resultant wave. Alright. So let's use the phase diagram to approach this problem. Let's assume that we show the amplitude of the first wave which has the wave which has the phase 0 like this. Okay. 
Now, how are you going to show the amplitude of the second wave at that location with a phase minus pi by 2? Well, you are going to show it like this, right? And this is a by 2. And similarly, for the third one, when the phase is pi, then the amplitude of the third wave is going to look like that in this phase diagram. Make sense, right? So once we have done this, then after this, it is pretty easy. We can find out the resultant of a and a by 3, right? And this is going to be 2a by 3 along the direction of a. Let's assume that the resultant amplitude is a resultant and the angle is let's say this angle phi. All right, we want to find out the face of the resultant wave with respect to the face of the first wave, which is zero, right? And now we can find out what is the resultant amplitude. So this is going to be under root. Can you see the angle between this one and this one is pi by two. So cos pi by two will become zero and you will have four a square by nine plus a square by four under the root sign. So how much will this come out to be? Well, this will come out to be 5a by 6. All right. So we have the resultant amplitude. And you can see from the right angle triangle PQR, we can find out what is tan phi. And tan phi in this case is going to be a by 2, which is the perpendicular divided by 2a by 2 right, which is 3 by 4. So phi comes out to be 10 inverse 3 by 4 and we have the final answer. So in this case, we can see that option C is going to be the right values of the amplitude and face of the resultant wave. In this case, you simply have to find out the average intensity carried by this transverse wave given by the equation y is equal to 5 sine 3t minus x. The density of the string is given as 1 kg per meter cubed. So we know that average intensity is just average power transmitted per unit area in a direction perpendicular to the propagation of the wave. Right? And we know that the average intensity is given by half rho v omega square a square. So if we can put the corresponding values in this equation, we can find out what is the average intensity. So we have the value of rho. Okay. And how do you find out the values of omega and v? Well, let's compare this equation with one of the standard forms, which is y is equal to a sine omega t minus kx, right? From here, you can clearly see that the amplitude is 5 meter. We have the value of rho. We also have the value of a. And by the simple process of comparison, we can see that omega is 3 radian per second. So we also have the value of angular frequency. And the value of wave number is 1 per meter. But we don't need the value of k. But with the help of this, we can find out the wave speed. Remember, the wave speed can be found by omega by k, right? So the wave speed comes out to be 3 by 1, that is 3 meter per second. So how much is the intensity of this transverse wave? Well, the intensity, and remember this is average intensity, is going to be equal to half into rho is 1, v is 3, omega square is 3 square, 
and a square is 25. Correct? And you will get 337.5 watt per meter square. So in this case, the average intensity is 337.5 watt per meter square. 